Oh, geez, boils and ghouls. <laughs> this is this is a this is gonna be a doozy of an episode. This is my favorite I'm, one. I'm dizzy already. We, we haven't started. even done this episode. It's my favorite. Jesus Christ. I, you know what it is? It's I like to I like to be friends with everyone and want everyone to like me. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to say anything bad. You but know, I, but I have, but no, it's, no. All right, let's no. do. Come on, okay, let's do this. All right, this. welcome. Hey there, boils and ghouls. <laughs> Welcome to this week's episode of Hollow Weekly. We're doing our third entry to Mind the Gap. <laughs> if you don't know what Mind the Gap is, we're trying to find the biggest uh, difference in ratings on Rotten Tomatoes. When we try to have or a any aggregator website. We might yeah, be yeah, using yeah. a different one. Uh, but we want to have, have them uh, have a theme. So our first episode was uh, I Am Legend and Sleepy Hollow American Authors. Or American Authors, uh, b- movies based on American literature, right? Uh, then we did uh, Hellraiser and Exorcist 3, both authors, first-time directors. Yes. And now we're doing Lights Out. Yes. And What Lies Beneath. Ghost movies. Ghost movies. We picked two ghost movies. Spooky and, ghosts. And, and keep in mind with that we're, we're trying to find the biggest differential between two movies that we think is wrong, right? So in this case, and, and, and the ending is not guaranteed, although I have a feeling this episode it is. But going into it, I'm open to changing my mind. I was open to changing my mind to this one. I'm, you, open, I'm open to changing my mind. If you fought for it, but, but so, but no, the, here's the thing. I, I, wait, wait. So the differential is, so Lights Out is 77% on Rotten Tomatoes, which is really impressive for a horror movie. Yes. Especially and, like a $5 million based off short story. Bam, bam, bam. Yeah, yeah, totally. Story. They're, and, usually, they're usually just cash grabs and yes. they don't get that great reviews. That's and What reviews. Lies Beneath is 46%. And we used to do this for How Low Can We Go? And I'm going to bust this out for this series because we haven't done this for the mind the gap yet uh so pardon me as you hear the rustling of me i'm gonna pull out my computer so i can do this i want to give the neighborhood that lights out is living in for context right for yeah for while we're doing this but while i'm booting up my computer and then we also got to do it for what lies beneath because yeah yeah i feel like there, I, there's gonna be some really like it'll be like dennis the menace 2 the one with carrot top <laughs> uh, that rating i'm like then the long doesn't belong there. Wait, wait. All right, I got it already because I had it saved. So you ready for this? This is the neighborhood. 77% neighborhood that lights out is living. Smack me with it. The first one's not going to impress you, but it's going to scare the shit out of me because it's one of my favorite movies of all time. It's Company of Wolves, which is one of my yeah, fa- yeah, yeah. favorite werewolf movies, right? It's a good movie. It's also living with Split, Your Next, Kill List, The Eyes of My Mother, and... Um, uh, that's it. So, what are some, uh, real, real quick, what about non horror? Oh, I want to see like what mainstream yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, motherfucker. Because when you said like your next, I'm like, okay, that makes sense to me. Really? Because your next is way better in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the, I, okay, Spoiler. and I wanted to say this. I said this before we recorded, and I, yes. want, I want to get it out right now that yes. I, I like David S. Sandberg. I love the Annabelle creation. Yes. Totally. Love, love, love this movie. Yes, totally. I saw let me find a main. But I'm gonna. But but there. Are, I'm gonna give it some points on our on our little chart that we're using. Yeah, we're we're gonna get to the chart in just a second. I'm just trying to find for some reason all these movies are movies no one's ever heard of. Like you don't know that. <laughs> give me some titles. Um, just do it. A Tale of Modern Outlaws. Oh, A Tale of Modern Outlaws. Bones Brigade. I fucking love Bones Brigade. Uh, <laughs> okay, Fury, the tank movie. Oh, I like Fury more. Yeah, I would hope so. All yeah. right, um, was, it was really it was nice. I like the gore in that. It was pretty good. I, I, this is not as impressive just because Cloverfield. <laughs> have a good have a good night, everybody. <laughs> I'm leaving. Next episode. Jesus Christ! All right, and then let me. I'm just gonna go real quick to uh, to the, the what's lies beneath area. Forty six. I gotta go down to forty six percent. Let me let me tell everyone. I gotta go into the green splotch area. Of Nasty. Rotten, of Rotten well, let me tell them the budget differences yes. on this because the. I mean, we do could put that into consideration because it yes. makes a difference. Lights Out had a budget of I th- from our from our quick Google foo, mm-hmm. which could be wrong. If it's wrong, let us know. Sure. Uh, Lights Out box or Lights Out budget four point nine million. <laughs> we'll go ahead and give it five, <laughs> but it made a box office of one hundred and forty eight million. Okay. What Lies Beneath was a budget of ninety million. Yes. I can tell you. Why, in two words, Ford Pfeiffer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, and box office revenue of $291 million. So both successful on their own terms. Absolutely. Lights out much more successful. Absolutely, yeah. All right, here's the neighborhood that uh, What Lies Beneath is living oh, in. Oh, Jesus. Right? Ernest saves Christmas. If What Lies Beneath 
like lost power and had to go next door and knock on the door and and ask its neighbor if its neighbor also lost power. Yeah, yeah. Which lights out really should be doing. Lights out should be doing. <laughs> right, we got but, any power? <laughs> but, right. But if what lies beneath knocked on the door, they would be knocking on the door of the witchboard, and then mm. it would move one more door down to Bride of Chuggy. Really? And then it would move one more down to the Meg. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> and then it would move one more down. If no one else answered the door, it would have to go knock on Goosebumps 2's door. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> that's that's what the critical perception of what lies beneath is, is that it's equivalent to those films. Did people did people so, was there a point in time in Hollywood people just <laughs> turned on Robert Zemeckis? They're just like they're like, listen, we get it. I did I, I so first of all, I saw this movie when it came out and I also do kind of remember why it got a lot of hate and then I did a little bit of research for this episode on like whatever. So I can give background to whatever. What do you want to do? Do you want to set up Do you want to set the table for what we're doing or do you just want to do the list first? Well, I just got done cooking so I don't want to set the table. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Let's do the list. No, no, no. Okay, let's set some tables. Let's set some tables. Well, the only background I can give you on what lies beneath is, is, and we are obviously doing spoilers in this episode, like all these episodes will be, because these are all basically going to be very known movies. But, um, well, maybe not. Hopefully there'll be some obscure movies, but at least they're movies that have, you've had a chance to watch them by this point. Um, But what lies beneath is Harrison Ford's only, as far as I'm aware, turn as a villain. He's spectacular as the villain. Damn. I was going to say Time and Lee, but I was going to say Two-Face, but that's Time and Lee Jones. Yes. But uh, you did say Fugitive, depending on perspective, yeah, yeah. Which, is, which is interesting. <laughs> but uh, right, but um, the marketing gave it away that he was a villain, and anyone who watched it without knowing he was a villain enjoyed it so much more than people for whom it was spoiled. Spoilers yeah. then were a much bigger deal than they are now. Yeah. Right? Like if something is spoiled for you then, like people walked into movies expecting to be surprised back in what was this, 2000? 2000. 2000 straight? I, yeah. I think it was early. Oh, you're right. It is 2001, yeah. So like, the, the, you know, this is a different era. So um, that part was spoiled and the way that it was marketed, it was... It was so, and again, he keeps going up on the in the series because of the, because the critical rating structure of the series. But Roger Ebert hated all of the ghost supernatural elements of it and loved all the Hitchcock homage thriller elements of it. Right, so there were a lot of ghost elements, which now I love. Right? Yeah, I mean, I loved it at the time, but now like I'm really glad they're in there. If this had been like a Scooby Doo movie where it all was explained by it would have been bogus, right? The only movie that does that really well is Diabolique, right? So it's so, funny. Like I like the ghost stuff in it, yes, but I also see what he meant. Sure, it's absolutely right. I mean, it's, I get it. It's it's expectations. It's yeah, totally. So so I think that's a big part of what caused the backlash to the movie was that people were like, "What is?" What is Robert Zemeckis doing? They wanted him to do like basically what he's doing sort of now, like Flight, The Walk, that kind yeah. of movie. And it, it, they just, they, I mean, let's face it, horror is always discriminated against. They just thought it was not this sophisticated. It was beneath him. Yeah. Ironically, <laughs> what lies beneath was beneath Absolutely. him. Absolutely. That's, I've, I've worked my way around to that's the, that's the reason. So that's why it took the hit for, for what it was. Um, but I obviously am going to fight against that for this episode so let's you want to just now that we've set the table and look i guess i guess the only thing you know about lights out is a short film and yes. then he got it made into a feature film yes okay okay direction okay so we're gonna go through our checklist the and it would kind of score the pieces of what how movies are what they're made up of and in the direction category which is first <laughs> 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 so so here's the thing let, let me i'm just gonna uh, let me go ahead george go ahead talk about how how david samberg's better than robert zemeckis All right, here's the thing no it's not even a, it's, not, it's not even that it's like here's the thing like for, for, forget there were even names involved let's say you were just didn't know you were blind wine taste test and you were just watching these two movies judging on direction without knowing who they were right i can tell you here, let, let me use my couple, here's, here's my wine glass okay i watch i watch what lies beneath i go like this um, that's a Zemeckis. <laughs> that's how it goes. <laughs> that's been aged since 2000. Since that's 2000. not fair. <laughs> Everyone knows wine from... Six, okay, so take names away. Wine I'll, from... I'll, when okay. is Lights Out? 13? 2013? 16? 16? 16? 16. 
Uh, all right. So, but here's the thing. This is not even a contest. It, it, I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to, we're, we're mocking this, but I'm going to come out and say, I watched Lights Out first on a plane, on a super tiny screen. I thought it was a pretty effective horror movie. I expected to be more disappointed than I was. I love the short. Yes. But I, I had already heard that it wasn't as good as the short through the grapevine. And then I didn't, every time you try to amplify a movie, like fill it, usually that kind of goes wrong, right? It's yeah. more effective as like that straight mean bullet, quick shot to the head, like that a short does. Right. Mm -hmm. So I was okay with everything up until the end, which I thought was fucking stupid, but yeah. everything else was fine. I was like, this is not, this is a pretty effective little horror movie. So I'm not a lights out hater or wasn't like, yeah, the jump, right? no one hears the lights out hater. I'll but say, I'll Zemeckis, say it right now. like the way what lies beneath is directed. And I'm just going to go and say this now. I think on, in looking back on it, now I've watched it four times. I think that it's kind of slow in parts and a little bit soggy, and I would cut out some of the backstory exposition yeah, and like yeah. whatnot stuff. But there's just no comparison. Just like one scene Dude. in What Lies Beneath. The, the, the scene towards the end that I was telling you about where the camera is following what's moving in the background by way of POV from a side view mirror on a car... And the door is being open and closed and the camera is is staying with the POV of the mirror. Like if you had eyes in the mirror, what you would be seeing is so fucking genius. It's just so good. There's nothing in Lights Out that even attempts to be like that kind of level of thing. The only thing you could knock here. Here's my counter. I'll play devil's advocate. Okay. See what you think. The only thing you can knock is what lies beneath is so clearly a pastiche of Hitchcock. That you for direction category on our checklist, maybe you could go. It's just not original at all, right? Like he's just ripping off Hitchcock. I would, and then I would say, mm -hmm. if that's the case, you've seen a Van Gogh, so <laughs> go paint a Van Gogh. <laughs> it's gonna be pretty fucking difficult. <laughs> yeah, well, that's valid. That, right. That's my argument. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and check. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and check. So, so I guess direct. Even, even, and I will say, because we wouldn't, wouldn't need to hark on it that much, but even like, because he did some episodes of Tales from the Crypt. Yes. You can feel when he did an episode from Tales from the Crypt. Yes. Like, it's just like a feeling. Like, a, it's a rhythm thing. I don't know. Like, it's just a combination of just, like, yep. perfection. Yep. And that's the thing is, there's something, so I, I never get to use this word, so I'm just excited that I get to use it. There's something so jaunty about the way that he does things, right? Yeah. So, like, even Flight, which is, like, just a really bleak, dark, kind of evil movie, mm -hmm. um, looking at, like, what it really is like to try to be a high-functioning alcoholic, like... The way it opens and just like the the bouncy classic rock music and like Denzel's like charisma that just like blasts from the screen. There's mm -hmm. just something so like jaunty about the way he does stuff. I feel like if Zemeckis, if I hired him to like event plan, it like the event would just be, even if I told him like, I don't like, you know, events with like, I don't want any like bullshit, like whatever. I want it to be serious. I want a serious event, like whatever. Mm -hmm. He would still find a way to make it fun. Like he, even when it's dark, it's fun. Right. So I don't know, man, uh, this, the funny thing is when I'm looking at our checklist, I thought direction was be as low as we go, but I'm about to laugh even harder than I did on the next category. Go so ahead. Well, real quick, real quick, uh, <laughs> nice. David, S. Amber, uh, lights out was 16. Annabelle creation was 17 and Annabelle was way better. And if I have to defend, I'm going to defend this just a little bit more on sure. Lights Outside. Uh, being that it was like the first big studio film, I wonder how much studio influence was to in to on it. Totally. But. Totally. The movie's out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. so. Well, it's, and, and most importantly, it's rated, right? Yeah. So like anyone who went to this who just depends on these websites, which we recommend you do not do. And was like, oh, I want to check out a movie tonight. What should I see? And you came across these two. You would pick Lights Out. Like, Absolutely. No, abs no doubt about it. No doubt. Okay. And so, you'd be wrong. <laughs> but go ahead. So now. Uh, <laughs> the next category. The next category is acting. <laughs> you take it. Start this one. All right. Let me just make sure I get the the names of the actors and actresses and, and Lights Out. I'll just keep laughing while you. Correct. Yeah. While you search. All right. Oh, shit. God damn it, IMDb. They're like, hey, you want to read it? We're going to cut their names off halfway. <laughs> Teresa Palmer. Uh, I know Maria Bella's in Lights Out. She, and she's great. Yeah, she's great. Um, Billy Burke. 
is in. Yeah. Uh, I like to, you know, he's a Twilight Sheriff. Sure. Pretty, you know, good for him. Sure. Uh, <laughs> compared to, okay, I'm done. Put the list down. <laughs> Michelle Pfeiffer and Harrison Ford. You don't Ford. need to Google? <laughs> no, I don't, need, I don't even need to Google. I don't need to Google. Michelle Pfeiffer, Harris Ford, and what lies beneath. Yes. And like, dude, like, I was watching it. Like, it was started to rain outside. I had my headphones on. I was watching it on Hulu. And even like the dumb shit where she's like, she's like scratching like his hairy chest and he's like, we had a breakthrough. I'm like, they had a breakthrough. Yep. Like those, they, those are, those are smart dogs living in Vermont or where the fuck they're at. Yep. Like I just bought it because yep. they're so good. They have such great chemistry together. In the supporting cast too. Totally. The, which is, so here's the thing I, I saw online and I don't know if this is true. I can't, I can't say that it's not though. It says that Michelle Fiverr is in every scene of the movie. There's not a scene in What Lies Me that Michelle Pfeiffer's not in. So I don't know that's true, but it feels true. And that's pretty fucking amazing. Like, I'm trying to think of another movie where the main character is in every, every scene. single scene, right? Yeah, dude. It's like... Because mm. there's a few scenes when, like... No, because even when they're talking with the rat, and they have that little cloth, and they're like, they go numb, mm -hmm. which they use later in the film. I just made that connection. <laughs> <laughs> yes. God damn it, dude. Yes. It's a clear cut for me, baby. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right. right. Yeah, dude, she's in, she's in like a lot of the movie. Yeah, I can't I can't think of a scene without her. So, but and that's the thing is they have great chemistry, and then and then to pull off, so she has to play herself and someone possessed. Harrison Ford has to play himself and his real self, right? Yeah. So like they're each playing dual characters, sort of, and the extra the the sorry that's not the right word, but the the peripheral cast members. I think are all good, but they are not in this movie at all. It feels in, in similar to The Fly to me, which is which which is just a Gold Goldblum Davis joint. Yeah, like you can't like the the bearded guys in there, but like he's just there to get spit on, and then like there's not any other real characters, right? So like there's not the I, the other characters don't matter in What Lies Beneath. It's it's no, but it's even the they're good. So like they I forgot good. her neighbor was uh, she's the woman who plays Sabrina's mom. Miranda yes. Otto and her husband's James Raymar, or Remar, yep, who was Raiden, yep, and Dexter's dad. They're just like everyone. And then the psychiatrist was the guy from T two, and he's he's fantastic. And he's it, only in two scenes, but he's fantastic. He's everyone in it is just so. Good, Although dude. he plays what has to be one of the weirdest psychiatrists in the history of movies, because he literally, she's like, "I think I'm going crazy. I'm seeing ghosts." He's like, "Have you tried to communicate with them?" I'm like, "What school of psychiatry did you go to?" Dude, like <laughs> she bought a Ouija board and had a séance after she <laughs> visited her psychiatrist. I'm like, "What advice is?" He? That was pretty. That was pretty dumb. Man. That was pretty bad. <laughs> Getting from this, that was pretty bad. From this psychiatrist, but uh, yeah, the act, so their acting is is phenomenal. But it, I mean, how rare is it to get to see like Harrison Ford do something like this, right? Like, yeah. and if you contrast it to another Michelle Pfeiffer movie, the weird mainstream horror movie on a big budget, which is Wolf. I mean, she specializes in this shit, right? Yeah. So like Wolf with Jack Nicholson and Michelle Pfeiffer, she carries that movie too. She's amazing in that movie. It's another huge budget movie that's like weirdly horror and also weirdly not like what mm -hmm. lies beneath. But Jack Nicholson, obviously, like, you know, that's the thing is he's playing like a crazy dude who likes to run through the woods and howl, which is his like Tuesday for Jack Nicholson. <laughs> <laughs> right? So like, in this one, Harrison Ford's playing a get totally against type, which which is spectacular mm -hmm. like, to watch. And he does not overplay the villain thing when he gives out. I right. think he's so chilling, just how calmly he kind of like explains how he's going to kill her and why he's doing it and why he's did it before. And like, it's kind of a big project. Right? Yeah. Nothing like the, the way away. he busted out, it's not like, it's not like, um, James Bond villain, like reveal my evil plan, like over mm -hmm. the top, like, no, Mr. Bond, I expect you to die moments. Yeah. He just does it kind of like, and he kind of sounds disappointed. Like you guys left me no choice. I just wanted to be with my hot wife and, and have a great do life. Some research, do some and research. Like, and then you all fucked it up. So like, and he, he's clearly insane, but like he plays it so like so believably, right? Yeah, yeah. I think that I'm gonna go ahead and check this. Yeah, dude, I think we can just move on. <laughs> not to be completely honest with you, dude. Like, no offense to the lights out actors, like you guys were great. It was a good movie, but like, sorry. Dude. Uh, shout out to Maria Bello. She is fantastic up as far as they let her do anything good. And then honestly, the other characters were again pretty good. But yeah, no one like there. No one was like no one was shitty. No. Like everyone was everyone. 
was pretty good. It's a five million dollar film. So the music right. for What Lies Beneath. Let me take our next category is Alan Silvestri, who is amazing, and the music is amazing. It's like part Hitchcock, Bernard Herrmann homage. It's part. Dude, it's I heard a lot really of psych- quiet. I heard a lot of psycho in a there. A lot of psychos in there, and the music itself is scary. Like I would go listen to this at Hollywood Bowl. Like I would listen yeah. to this movie music at Hollywood. Yeah, I would Bowl. too. So good. Lights well, out. <laughs> God damn it, dude. <laughs> this ain't right. Why did we pair these two? I thought this was going to be close. I did too, dude. Like, we said, like, you guys don't understand. We were, we were throwing out ideas, and I was like, yes, this is going to be so close. And I, but I had never seen What Lies Beneath. That was what fucked us up, dude. <laughs> right. I never seen it. If I had seen it, I'd be like, no. Well, and here's the thing is, I, I, I said, let's do these two movies together. This is my fault. And then I said, let's. I'm going to rewatch What Lies Beneath. And I watched the first 40 minutes, which is the worst part of What Lies yeah. Beneath. Now, I mean, it's all good, but like, it's just, it's, it's, it's just it's set up. It's right? long, like, yeah. Uh, but you can do set up. Like, Rear Window doesn't feel like there's any, like, um, like slow parts to me in it. It just plays, like, perfectly, right? Yeah. There, this one, I feel like there's a lot of stuff I would change in the first 40 minutes. The fake, the whole fake out of the of the neighbors thing is kind of cool on paper, but like I think they just gave it too much time, right? But whatever, it's fine. Like it's good in keeping you like guessing, and yeah, and I even liked when she saw him at the party, the husband and wife. That was awesome. And then he like grabs her throat and sticks his tongue out and like is fucking with her. That was awesome. But like, it, but we thought this when I had just seen that, I was like. Ah, I don't remember this is worse than I remember what lies beneath being and we were thinking well lights out is a pretty good horror movie so we're like oh this could be close but okay but we're only three in yeah we're only three we like are you giving minutes. are you doing anything for music for lights out nah <laughs> okay check, check. Dude, like the music and what lies beneath was just so I mean it's so good yes it's amazing like I don't remember any of the music from <laughs> lights out but like and maybe it's a little cheating because like there was like those like psycho-esque um you know, sounds and what lies beneath, and that's mm-hmm. super identify. You can identify that anywhere sure. as a horror fan. Sure, but I liked it. Yeah, I liked it. Liked it enough to remember it. All right, it, this might get closer because we yeah, got yeah, yeah. we, we got getting... a category where lights out has a chance. All right, so the next category is scares. Let's let's be real about this. Lights out scary. Lights out is a... lights out scary. All right, so, so a lot more jump scares, but but so let me, let's. I'm terrified of the dark. But so let okay, but let's back up a second. I agree with you that Lights Out is a scarier movie in total, in total, but the bathtub scene in What Lies Beneath is scarier than anything in Lights Out, right? So now we're looking at a scares per minute. No, 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 no. I'm just asking as a question. I'm going to give this to Lights Out, but I'm I'm telling you, like, I find What Lies Beneath more disturbing. I hate yes. So I hate Buried Alive, and this is Buried Alive, but in a tub bathtub yeah and and that scene always stuck with me as terrifying right like lights out lights out is is a scary movie but but i know i didn't the next day i wasn't like oh i gotta sleep with the lights on or whatever but what lies beneath i remember when i watched it i was like i'm not going near a bathtub for like weeks right so why i i I actually was in a bathtub the other day like i was i was like hiding in the bathtub and gatsby our cat would like peek over it's really funny we were just like making a game well you're not married to a psycho so yeah i see your point but uh Uh, i think what lies beneath is scarier in its implications but it's not a scarier movie that's than lights money on that's that's on the nose you could be living with someone who you think is totally into you and normal and they could be a total psycho who who would just paralyze you and let you suffer and die and like like for no reason because they think that it's justified that's scarier to me than like the lights out demon randomly running around. And can we talk about yeah. the elephant in the room real quick? Because I don't like how lights out treats mental illness. It makes mental illness like the generator of all the bad things in the movie. So it's not like this randomly came to her. The reason this is all happening is because the mom is mentally ill, which yeah. I, I I don't like. But I mean, there's just no way to say that. So they did think Michelle Pfeiffer was mental. They did. She wasn't. She was, no. She, she was just like a she was good, possessed she was a detective a and didn't even know it. Yeah, that's true. Found the key and the block of hair. Let's give this to the lights out. Let's give it the lights out. Okay. Right, uh, you know what, dude? Like, here's the thing. 
I kind of feel like that's a charity give, <laughs> to be honest, because, like, the bathtub, like, everything in the bathtub was, like, dude, even though, like, I even made a note, like, it reminded me so much of Kill Bill when she's in the coffin. She's trying to, like, move her toes. Yes. And I'm like, dude, like, that's, like, when we, there's, we have the influence category coming up, and, like, that's a little unfair because Lights Out's newer. Yeah, yeah, we can, but, we'll figure it out. We'll figure that out. Yeah, look, you know what? I'll, ah, do I want to give the Lights Out? Well, well, let's talk about the other thing that I wanted. We'll come back to this. We'll circle back. Okay, but let's talk. We can do with this now. Let's talk about the other thing that I really wanted to talk about is time, right? So, like, this movie comes from 2000. And I think that it wouldn't fool most moviegoers now. Even if you went into a cold, I think they would get that Harrison Ford is the villain before the movie wanted him to. Because, because the more you do something, the more movies in general do something... Like, you can't be taken by surprise by, like, when the dinosaurs break out of a park now. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like, it's been done too many times, right? So, like, I think it was fresher then, and you you were like, okay, it's still we're ready real, for but, it. No, I, I think it would fool some people, because they're real reserved about it. Like. They are. There's no, he's not like, she's not, she doesn't see Harrison Ford out in the shed at midnight. No, and he plays shit. it. He doesn't give you any, like, you gotta, you, once you know he's the villain, you go back, he's doing some really subtle shit that gives away he's the villain, but you're not catching it at the time. I so. think it still holds up. I mean, so, I just watched But the reason I say that is because the scary element of Lights Out is using 2016 techniques, which are just way more in your face, like, you're fucked. S- scary. There, it's more like being in a horror maze at like at like a really good haunt, right? Yeah. So I'll give it to lights out. That's not a charity gift. Okay. Like it is. It is scary. Like when I was like when I was rewatching it, like I, yeah, I was like, oh fuck. I'm giving it to what lies beneath. <laughs> no, you son of a bitch! I thought we both agreed. <laughs> Sorry. The more I think about it, the more I just. I'm telling you, man. I'm terrified of being Ugh. paralyzed. I'm terrified of drowning in a bathtub. I'm terrified of. Like the shit people hide beneath, like their exterior, they show the world. Like I'm just more scared of that shit than you're scared than, of that. You than, walk around Glendale, and you're like, I wonder if that Armenian guy. I'm telling you, it's not that. It's not in specific. It's just more in general. It's just more like if someone, if someone's hiding their true self from you, and you trust them with your entire life, like you just fucking kill them. <laughs> you just bite their little throat or whatever. <laughs> You know, it's fine. We'll, all right, we can come back to that. All right, let's do. No, humor. no, no. We've we've said enough. All right, let's do humor. Category of humor. I don't think either of these movies have any humor at <laughs> no, all. They're both pretty like. <laughs> There's nothing funny in either of we these. We could probably just skip. Is humor, there dude. anything funny in either of these movies? I don't think like. So, I know dude. the characters make a couple. Why? Yeah, like the girlfriend character in Lights Out. Like the i'm sorry the boyfriend character in lights out he makes a couple like okay so then it's a battle of side characters because the boyfriend says some like funny stuff i think i don't know if i can remember i do remember a few lines of michelle Pfeiffer's friend when she gets a new car and she's like maybe i'll pick up some cute dudes and she goes where's the boy he's in the he's in the trunk yes yes i'll give it a little ties beneath no it's a tie it's not a tie it's not a tie <laughs> name tell me one of the funny things he said in lights out I can't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's beneath. Boom. All right. There we go. All right. All right. Influence what lies beneath. We don't even have to worry about this. That's not even a fair category. So we. Uh, yeah, it's no. We can almost. N.A. Uh, yeah, this is N.A. That N-A. one. That's. I don't want to. I don't want to like bury right. no, lights out because uh, I like the movie. Okay. okay so, so writing. Writing. Okay. So apparently, let me look up his, his name. I think I wrote on the back. I, th- am I wrong on this? Clark Gregg of, of what Marvel? Says. Like Agent you know what's his fucking name uh wrote this that's great that's what it says and then uh but on lights out eric hi says her uh wrote annihilation or not annihilation um, arrival. arrival yes and arrival's really really good yes i absolutely agree that arrival is better written than what lies beneath <laughs> yeah i'll say that <laughs> I'll say that. Arrival is better, written better than What Lies Beneath. Write-in candidate on our ballot. Yeah. Can we do a write-in? Arrival wins. <laughs> the writing category. Dude, What Lies Beneath gets writing. Are you kidding me? It's not even close. Yeah. yeah Just because the, the ending, ending of Lights Out is so bad. Yeah. All right. Atmosphere. Here was where we get interesting. This is a battle. This is a fair battle. This is a fair fight. So mm-hmm. What Lies Beneath had that really cool... Where are they at? In Vermont? Maine, yeah, Vermont, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's fine. Like that, that, that house on the lake. Yep. The the weather, like 
I don't know. It just had that like crispy cold air. Like they're all their sweaters on at some point. And, like totally. I don't know. It just that felt good. Yep. But like the lighting and like the feeling of you know the darkness in lights out. Yep. It's pretty on point. Because that's mostly the movie. So I'm going to be honest here. I am going to give my first vote to Lights Out in this category. And, atmosphere. And, yeah, and, I think I, I agree with you. And on I'm that. giving it to you. Just I'm giving it to it just because of the weird way I'm kind of interpreting that category. So I think I think what lies beneath is better shot. I think the environment of what lies beneath is integral to the story. Like these have to be privileged professors leaving living like a privileged like you know upper class life. Because you need that for all of the the stuff that's going to go down in the movie, and yeah. and all the little touches in the in in what lies beneath are are really good in that category. And I love the underwater shots, right? All all those things are really really good. But I mean, you're basically like you could you could take a lot of the shots out of what lies beneath and use it as like a real estate movie. <laughs> Right? I want to sell real estate over here. And that's like lights out is authentically visually cool. Right. Yeah. Like I, yeah, think, yeah, yeah. I just think that like it, it's a way cooler. And, and to what we were saying about before, you couldn't do a, what lies beneath haunt. <laughs> no. <laughs> right. Like what would it be? It would be like, you'd have, no, it'd be like a dinner party. And the, like, right? like, murder mystery. <laughs> so I like lights out atmosphere better. So I'm going to give it lights out. Mm. Yeah, I, I always I always go back to like what would I hang on the wall if I yeah. could hang a frame? Probably be something lights out. Oh no, I would definitely hang one lies beneath. It's way better shot. But but I but that's the thing. No is- no no, because I'm thinking about like say okay okay you know what? Here's how we'll do this one. I have an art gallery. Okay. I got Frankenstein coming through the door for the first time. Uh, the shot Nosferatu going through the door. Sure. Do you put next to it to keep the theme going? I put the image of Michelle Pfeiffer on top of Harrison Ford with the crazy look on her face saying, I think your wife's starting to suspect. It's a... Oh, I, do the, I do the lights out monster. The monster? Yeah, I do the silhouette of the monster. All right. Fair in, that, in that exhibit. All right. In that exhibit. That's fair. But then I, I, I could just make a lights... I could just make a what lies beneath exhibit. So. <laughs> no, it's fine. That's fair. Yeah, I'm never gonna open up an art gallery, dude. Like, <laughs> I don't even know how that shit works. I don't. Yeah, but I. That's the thing is, I think just in terms of total atmosphere, I just keep going back to the fact that what lies beneath, like Hitchcock movies, aren't about. Oh, I'm gonna get in trouble here. Hitchcock movies aren't really about the setting, right? So, like Vertigo is sort of a. I mean, I'm saying it no. wrong. I'm. I'm. I'm not saying it right. So it's. It's not about. It's not like a, it's not like Lawrence Arabia where the landscape is sort of the story, right? Like it, the story is what's happening inside the characters, what's motivating them. I get like, my argument. You know, for lights out. that kind of stuff. And and it's, and that's what what lies beneath is, right? Like lights out has special effects and the crazy horror shit happening in it, right? Well, here's why I give it to atmosphere because, and I almost can tie this into the next one because the atmosphere is dependent on the characters. Okay, and so you know when you see a certain atmosphere. It's almost sort of like the fog rolling in. Mm-hmm. Whenever you see the lights dimming or doing something like that, that's when you know the danger is going to come. Mm-hmm. And to me, the atmosphere is solid throughout all of what lies beneath. And I like it. And it sets up... It's, it makes it makes sure. what happens interesting and scary. Yes. But it's sort of like... You know, if I if I feel like the you know the wind, you know whatever happens, what happens when the headless horseman comes back again? Like you hit like some weird shit, like you feel it's it. So weird that you brought up Sleepy Hollow because I was thinking of that the other day in terms of these movies. But go ahead. I don't know. Like I I, I I like when your surroundings change when bad shit's about to happen. Other than yes. my whole surroundings. Yeah, that's a great point. point. That's a great point. Yes, I and that's I think that's what I was getting at. What I was getting at basically was. Like I, I wouldn't visit this the scene locations of what lies beneath. I'm like, oh, this is the, the I house where they there, shot. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's probably a bed and breakfast now, right? Yeah. Like, but like I would tour the lights out where they shot it because it would just be inherently cooler to see. Yeah. Right? Like, who wants to look at a bathtub? And when you go when you go to the lights out places, the lights flicker off. Your heart's gonna race. No, but okay, <laughs> fair enough. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, you don't trust people's insides or <laughs> inner and gizzards with the lights flickering at a... All right, next category, characters. 
What lies beneath? Yeah, what lies beneath? Obviously. I mean, like the 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 story just has really taken it. Cinematography, what lies beneath? What we lies beneath? To, and then special effects is the last category. This could get interesting though because. You tell me. How did the effects in What Lies Beneath hold up to you? Good. Good. Dude, it reminded me of watching Ghost Story. Yes. The it reminded Dixon. me just of watching that. Where it was like, even even when it starts to feel dated, I'll still buy it. Like, I don't care. Yep. And it felt a little Night of the Hunter, too. With the, yeah, it did. The, the hair from the dead. Yes. Uh, girls, like, floating in the water. And, like, yeah, that was that's all that was really cool. That was good. And then, like, <clears throat> I was watching... Um, Cause like we had watched Lights Out in the in the Facebook group. Yes. And that was my time first time watching it. Yes. And then I rewatched it uh, a few scenes today, and even like the editing for like the scares, like when the monster goes after the main girl. It's good and it's scary, but like the effect uh, when Michelle Pfeiffer sees the ghost in the reflection of the bathtub, and then having uh you once you are once you on the mirror or whatever. You know. Yeah, you know. Yep. To, like, and just the little touches, like when Michelle Pfeiffer leaves and she's walking down the hall, and the camera stays at the back of the hall, and you see in the other room where she's not seeing that the computer just turns itself on. Yeah, and shit like that is just shot so well. Right? And every time she walked up to the door and the door opened in front of her, yeah, like little touches like that, totally felt really good. What else did I say? Oh, and the other part that was hilarious about what I've been, she was like. Uh, he's eating. T- he's eating a TV dinner alone. She's like, he's a serial killer. Let me know if he eats something weird like lady fingers. <laughs> so the humor we got that right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even I, I'm looking at my notes for what lies beneath because I just she mentioned the neighbors. Oh yeah, yeah. That was a dumb note. Fuck that. Uh, the one thing I did uh, want to address in what lies beneath, and I hate this in every single film. Yes. S- stop doing this. Is when a character's brushing their teeth. And talking, yes. Nobody does that. No. And then, and then when actors do it, there's no toothpaste. Not like their mouth's not yep. foaming up like no. Cujo. Yeah. I don't know. I hate that. I just I got. Hate. I guess got. I just got. I had to voice that. Yeah. Uh. Uh. But what lies beneath? Special effects. And then editing. Most of what lies beneath is one shots. So I'm not sure. There's a lot of editing there. I think if editing. No. Even with the editing, dude, you gotta look at the transitions. And what lies beneath had that really cool oh, yeah. scene where she's hugging her daughter at home, and then it cuts to her at the college, and they walk away. Yeah. Stuff like that was really great. Yeah. And then the editing when she's in the bathtub, cutting from her toes to her eyes, and you yeah. see the water rising up. Yeah. Can we just talk about how good that scene is? That scene alone is just. Okay, if you haven't watched What Lies Beneath, it's two hours long. There's a lot of fluff in it. It's and you. I hope you like it after listening to this episode. But if you have no time at all, watch this bathtub scene. So good. That's all you need to know. Watch the setup to it when he's talking to her about why he has to do the bad things he do and all that. And then just into the leading into the scene, it's so good. It's just like, and it's so unexpected sort of, you, you know how it's sort of going to go. But I love that there's the fake out. Even he even, he even puts the time and effort to have a fake out where you think that the key to her surviving is turning the water off, but that doesn't really work, mm-hmm. right? It's actually unplugging the tub that has to be the way to do it. But a lot of her struggle is getting the water turned off by like manipulating the shower head that fell, right? Yeah. But like that, that's not enough. And you're just rooting for her so hard the whole way. And, and we talk about the acting challenge it is to play paralyzed, completely paralyzed, and then waking up from it and just having these micro expressions of terror, like, that shit is so good. She was, ah. she knocked it out of the park. Yes. And like, I, honestly, here's the thing. Lights Out is very enjoyable. It's not a bad movie. <laughs> this isn't what this is about. Right now. This is not about us shooting on movies because that's stupid. Yes. Mm. But like, I think that bathtub scene alone, mm-hmm. I would take over the majority, like almost all of Lights Out. I would take over every, all of Lights Out. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And so, so we don't have to go back to the list and do the vote count. I know, no, how, I know yeah, how this we, went. Yeah. Like so, so what lies beneath wins. And can we talk for a second? But about how, but I will say yes. I will say just to wrap this portion yes, up. Yes. For being a five million dollar film, it won in the scares and the atmosphere. Yes. What more can you ask for for a five million dollar film? Yeah, and it made like two hundred million dollars. Yeah, you so, said so. so <laughs> they're the they're fine. Yeah, they're totally fine. <laughs> but here's the thing: is is I, can we just talk about how excited I am that? So my original idea for Mind the Gap series was that it would be gradual. Like, how low can we go? I was like, we will. We started with a, a gap of one one percent, right? 
So one movie was like 68, one movie was 69 or something like that, right? So then, and then we were like, I, I pictured we would go to like four and eight and then just try to find ones that were, this is a 31 point gap on our third episode. Dude, right? that's like, it's like signing up for medical school <laughs> and like showing the first day of class and be like, let me transplant a brain, dude. Right, right. <laughs> I got this. And this is provable. Like, this is science. Like, what lies beneath is a better film. It's a better movie. The only argument so far that's a flaw in this series that we'll fix in the next episode, I think, is that we are con- we have been pitting pretty large budget Hollywood blockbuster movies against low budget horror movies. So we'll I'll, we'll we won't do that again for like the next few episodes, right? But it's not our fault that that's where they're rated in the aggregate. Yeah, don't get mad at us, man. Like like we have to deal with what where they're rated. So like again, it goes back to. If you don't, if you, you should, everyone should be listening to this podcast, but if you don't listen to this podcast and you just go to Rotten Tomatoes to pick out a movie for the night and then you think to yourself, like, let's say that you're a horror fan who watches primarily new movies or like certain genre, like slasher yeah. or whatever. And, and you, do, you're just, you're trying to widen what you watch. So, so let's say this year you're going to watch. You're, you're going to take a shot on five older movies that you don't know that much about, right? Mm-hmm. You would never watch What Lies Beneath based on its rating, right? No. You're, so you're being robbed of an Absolutely. amazing film by by this rating system, which is what this series is about, is to is to try to like change that a little bit. That right? way, yeah. That way you can you know fit in. Right. Exactly. So movies. and 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 the analogy to this is. You you make a decision. You're here. You're like we're, we're starving. It's Friday night. Let's go out and eat, right? And you find a restaurant that's five star on Yelp. Yes. And then you find a restaurant that's negative two stars on Yelp, right? And you go to the five star one, and you don't really enjoy it. And then you're like, you know, fuck it. Next week I'll go to the negative two star one, and it's better, right? I mean, this is a thirty one point swing. <laughs> It, it's a big whatever, and we're gonna try to find like wider swings of 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 the, like we're not done, right? So no, we want to find not the, close. we want to find as far as we can go with this uh, concept. So I almost but, I wonder, I wonder, but what, we've made a lot of progress pretty fast. If you listen to the show, yes, I do. I want I, I I'm curious. I wonder what David Sandberg would think of what lies beneath. Oh, you ever yeah. wonder that? Robert Zemeckis, where he thought it lights out. Yeah, I, w- I wonder. I would wonder. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask them. I'm gonna find them. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna find them. We live in LA. You can just walk yeah, around just, and find yeah, anyone. Yeah. Just go into a fancy restaurant. Yeah, and be like, "Where's Robert?" <laughs> It'll be fine. We'll find him somewhere. This was a good one. Yeah, this was a good one, dude. And I thought going into it, like when we said it, <laughs> I was like, I think I said something like, "Dude, this is gonna be so close. This is gonna be a good episode." And then I watched What Lies Beneath, and I was like, "Dude." <laughs> Like show must go on. Well, man. that's not fair to you. So I, we're, I'm gonna let you pick, like, because that I mean, you, I I had seen both these movies going into it. You had only seen one, so um, yeah. I I did not see. Here's the thing, though. I, I I and and this I'm then I'm done with this subject, right? But this is the thing. I went through what lies beneath getting trashed. I lived that, right? Yeah. So like, I really until we talked this out in this episode, I couldn't be sure it was gonna win because I've heard so much shit about that movie. Right, like if, I think mm-hmm. Roger Ebert gave it like one and a half stars out of five. Yeah, and when, and right? back in the day, like when that's how you got your reviews, right? And you, he gave it that. You're like, there's no way I'm ever gonna watch this movie. Right, like, this right. is a shit movie. And there's also no way you can be confident going into an argument that a movie that you just was so beat up on is going to win when you really kind of go through a list and, and pull out the elements and one by one and be like, whatever. But when we did it, it turned out to be the biggest massacre of the series so far. So this was, this was crazy. You guys let us know what you think. Um, if you have, a uh, uh a hidden appreciation for what lies beneath that you have not let out to the world. You can do it now. This is a safe space. (laughs) Right. Exactly. But let us know what you think either way. Like we're open to, yeah, we could be uh, convincing arguments for the other way. And, and also probably not though. And also, and also (laughs) let us probably not. And also let us know other um, suggestions for the mind. Yeah. If you have a, if you have a good idea, please uh, let us know. Cause you guys know everything. You guys, yep. They know more about horror than we do. Bro, let's so so. But we really enjoyed this. We'll see you next. We'll see you next time. Like the show. Subscribe on iTunes. Give us a five star review. Follow us on Spotify. Until next time, bulls and ghouls. Watch a bunch of horror movies. Stay scary. Bye. Guys. Bye. Bye.